Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting After Effects tutorial. And today we're going to take a look at uh, creating some cool effects uh, with Sam Loya. Now this is tutorial number 60 and uh, wow we've made it a long way. I'm glad you're here. Um, you know I've learned a lot of things. I hope you guys have learned a lot of things. And uh, one of the things I've learned is that when the sign says do not feed the bears man you'd better not feed the bears as Sam Loya has uh, found out by the way that is a Simpsons reference uh, for those of you who didn't get that but I thought it was funny um, so anyways what we're gonna be doing is creating an effect where Sam heals over time so sort of like superhuman powers mind over matter kind of a thing so here's sort of uh, what we're gonna be doing So as you can see he kind of heals up slowly and what's great is you can see that the wounds kind of close in on themselves as they sort of heal away. So anyway, we got some great things we're going to be going over in this tutorial, some advanced things, um, you know, far better than any of the crap in all the previous tutorials. This one is the one. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is take our Sam heal footage, drop it into a new comp and uh, we're going to get started. now. We're going to do some motion tracking, of course, um, but I'm going to show you kind of a nice way to motion track footage that might be grainy or just difficult to track. Um, and that is to add an effect called Remove Grain. And we'll set it to Final Output. And we'll use the default settings, kind of smooths it out a bit. And also, I'm going to choose Effect Color Correction Curves. And we'll brighten it up maybe give it a little bit of contrast um, so that the tracker has something better to look at now if I were to try to track my footage right now all of my effects would go away you see it goes back to the original footage now I don't want to do that I'm gonna close that instead I'm gonna pre-compose our footage so I'll choose layer pre-compose and we'll move all attributes into the new comp We'll just call this footage and choose OK so now I'm going to track this pre-comp. So I'm going to right click and choose track motion. And uh, we'll zoom in here. And now you can see our effects are still applied and now we should hopefully get a better track. In fact we will. I did this earlier and it works. So that's good. I'm going to hit rotation and for this shot also scale. And I'm going to line up track point uh, number one. Um, I think I'm just going to do the ear, this, this area here and the nose here. Now the reason why I'm going to do it here is because I want my cuts to be around this area and so you want to kind of track the area in which you're going to be adding the effects and that'll sort of make for the best track. So actually I will do just this left eye here and that may actually work better. So select that and I'm going to track forward. Now there is one setback to this method and that is you have to wait for it to render all of those effects and so that really slows the tracking down. Um, but would you rather have a really good solid track or one that bounces around? So that's kind of the trade-off and we can shut those effects off later on because we don't really need them for the work we're going to be doing, just for the tracking. Well I'm going to go put a turkey in the oven. Okay I'm back, wow um, that turkey was great. Um, it was actually a couple of days ago now. Um, so our tracking is done and so I'm going to go back into the comp and just create a null object and then I'm going to choose edit target select our null and click apply and choose OK. So now our uh, tracking point is right there on his eye and now I can alt double click on this comp go inside and shut these effects off. In fact I can just delete them and then close this out and so I can close my tracker out and I don't need to uh, work with that anymore and everything's a lot faster now. Okay let's go and move on to the next uh, couple of steps. Um, one other quick tip is if I choose effect uh, noise and grain remove grain I can actually increase the preview region and as long as that's covering the area in which I want to track I don't actually have to apply it to the entire footage so that might save you some time especially if you're working at 720p um, 
etc. So quick tip, but let's go and move on to the next few steps. I'm going to shut off the null object. And what we're going to do is choose project and bring in one of our evolution textures. So I'm going to take texture number 10, bring it out, and uh, we'll scale it down a bit. And I'm going to change the transfer mode to overlay just for a moment so we can kind of see what we're doing. Now, there's a lot of different areas on this texture that look cool. I'm just going to use this area right in here. I'm going to rotate it and just uh, bring it right in here and scale it up. So basically, I want to use these two cuts on his face. So I'm going to change it back to normal. Choose Effect Color Correction Curves. And we're just going to add some contrast to get rid of the gray and bring some of the darker tones back in like so. Now this is the first step. Um, what we need to do is sort of make a pre-comp with our cut map in it as we'll call it. So I'll choose layer pre-compose. We're going to move all attributes. We're going to call this cut map and choose OK. And then we'll alt double click and open up that comp and then I'll create a new solid and uh, we'll make it white and choose OK. Then we'll move it down below here and we want to set the track mat to luma mat inverted. And so what that does is leaves only the white area. Now we do have all this extra area out here because our texture is only that large. So we'll take the white layer, take the pen tool, and just cut out this texture area that we want. And so now we've created our cut map. Now I'm going to go back into our main comp. And what I'll do is take our footage comp, copy it, and paste it into this comp. And put it below. And then I'm going to right click and choose guide layer. Guide layer, what that will do is allow us to see the layer in the comp. But in this comp, it doesn't show up. You can see that this layer is all by itself and I can move it around so it's just kind of a uh, so basically it's like a helper layer or sort of like a reference layer um, you know or you know what I like to call it um, I like to call it a guide layer um, so very uh, very helpful and very uh, useful <laughs> then I'll go back into our main comp now to make this easier I'm gonna duplicate our null object select our cut map and our null object and pre-compose it into a new comp Basically, what I want is cut pre comp. What I want to do is have the tracking data in the main comp, but also have the tracking data inside of this comp. So if I uh, put these in order, you see here's our final comp, and then I have this comp, which is the pre comp of the cut map, and then I have the cut map, which actually has the texture in it. Now, this is kind of important for uh, later on, but I just want to kind of get it out of the way for now. What I'll also do is make another copy of the footage and put it inside of this cut pre-comp. And that way we also have a reference. Then I'll take the cut map, parent it to the null object, and then right click on the footage and make sure it's set to guide layer. And that way in this comp we won't see any of the footage. It'll just be our cut map. So confusing maybe a little bit, don't worry about it. Um, you'll run into a problem and you'll know why this is the way to go. So now I'm going to come over to our effects and presets. We're going to type in glass and we're going to take uh, the CC glass effect and apply it to our footage. Go to the surface, select our cut pre-comp as sort of the displacement map. I'm going to shut the cut map off and then we're going to play with the settings here. First I'm going to change the softness to zero change the property to alpha and so now we can sort of see uh, what's going on. I'm going to set the height to 2 and the displacement to maybe 50. So now I'll come down to the light options and I want to set the height to about 25 uh, maybe maybe a little higher than that 28 and the light direction to about negative 180. So now we've created sort of a light that's kind of coming up from above um, which kind of matches the scene a bit. Now I'm going to go into the shading, increase the ambient light a bit, 
and the diffuse light just a little bit also, or the diffuse material. Now, this looks pretty good, but I may want to increase the roughness so that we see a little bit more of the brighter area, and then bring the specular down so that it's just not as intense. And then we can soften this about 0 0.15. 0 0.25. So we'll come back to these settings in a little bit, but basically we're creating sort of the embedded look of uh, the cuts that are going to be on his face. Now we have a pre-comp right here. I'm going to choose Effect, Generate, Fill, and that's going to fill it with red, and we'll make a dark red color, and change the transfer mode to Classic Color Burn. And so that kind of gives it a darker look, and we'll bring the opacity down, just hit T, and we'll bring it down to about 40. And that kind of gives us our blood cut. Um, then I'll duplicate our layer again, and I'll choose Effect, Blur, Fast Blur. So this is going to kind of make sort of a sore area around our cut. So if we increase the blur, you see we sort of create kind of like a, a painful looking skin. And then we choose Effect, Curves. And then if we go to the Alpha channel, we can boost it to where that looks a little bit more intense on those bloody cuts. So at this point we can start playing with the softness of you know the effect. We can choose blur, fast blur on the initial cut and just set it to maybe about one and that'll just soften it a bit. And then also we can go into the footage uh, glass effect and play with the height. You know if we want to make it seem like it's more of a deeper cut you can you know, soften the uh, the material and you know play with the height. You know, if it's like a bullet um, or something along those lines. So these are the settings that you want to play with in order to make it uh, look more realistic. Um, so, but for now, that looks pretty close, and our tracking data should be analyzing this, and it is. And that's because inside of our cut precomp, we have our cut map attached to the null object with the parent function. So that's that um, and now we need to move on to the next step which is basically making these cuts heal. So what I'll do is go into the cut pre-comp and I'm gonna select the cut map choose effect matte simple choker and what this is gonna allow us to do is basically cut this down so if I kinda increase it you see we just kind of makes it disappear there now it's going to be tricky because we're going to have to play with the animation speed but basically we'll time this up to about here set a keyframe for the choke mat I'll move forward set the choke mat to maybe one or even more than that uh, about five then I'll hit U and so now we have our keyframes but the problem is a lot of the stuff goes away in the first part see that and then it kind of sits here for a few frames and then finally goes away at the very end. So what we need to do is sort of remap our keyframes so that it's a lot more gradual as it depletes away. So I'll just kind of move forward a few frames. So right there, look how much goes away in just a few frames. What I'll do is set a keyframe right there. Then I'll move the keyframe over, move both these over in fact. And so now I can look at the difference between these two keyframes and again you see a lot happens between here and here. You see that? All that goes away. So I'll set a keyframe here and move this one over. So now we just kind of look here, slowly depletes away. Um, you know, and you just kind of want to massage this out until you get a nice gradual fade out of these of these effects. So right here we're seeing a lot of a lot of change. So I'll move this over. So basically you want your curve to look something like this so that it slowly fades away the cuts. So now if I go back into our main comp and kind of scrub through it, you can see that our cuts are sort of depleting away and that we still have that 3D look because our glass effect is basing it on that material. Now say we want to change the way this looks. Well, Instead of going into the cut pre-comp, we just go into the cut map, make a change in here, do whatever we want, you know, like add a different texture, you know, even paint on some, some cuts or something like that. 
and then if I go back into the final comp, it completely updates with those effects. Now if you want to move the position to reposition it, just go into the pre-comp and just move over the cut map and it will uh, update in the final comp. So you can do pretty much anything you want. You can do shrapnel cuts, um, you know, bullet holes. Now another thing we can do to enhance this shot is add some bruises to his face. So to do that we just create a new solid and we'll make it like a purplish blue color and we'll set the mode to soft light and then we just take the pen tool and we just draw some shapes around the area we want to look bruised. We'll hit F and we'll just feather them out. And uh, you know you can lower the opacity um, and change the color. Maybe we could make them a little bluer. Something like that. And then you can parent it to the null object that has our tracking data and that will keep them stuck on the face. So then you can fade them out as he heals or leave them, uh, depending on what you like. Now, um, another thing you want to think about is if you're doing this effect, you know, live action wise, you know, put some real blood on the face so it heals away, but maybe the blood is still there. Um, you know, that sort of bled out onto his skin. So another little detail that you can kind of think about if you're looking to do this in effect for an actual, you know, production. So. Now I gotta hand it to Sam. He's just a great guy, just super reliable. He'll do anything. Um, you know, he's always excited to come out there and and record these tutorials and do all this fun stuff. Um, you know, it's like it's like he doesn't even care what I tell him to do. You know, he's like a machine, like a robot. Like I say, you know, uh, stand on one leg, and you know, he'll do it. It's just uh, it's just unreal. You know, it's uh, it. What's this? What is this? Man, dun 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 and then just put a picture of uh, old Terminator there and uh, add a little shadow. It looks pretty good. Um, now clearly Sam's got some problems he's got to work out um, but we'll deal with that later. Um, but this does certainly explain a lot. Um, anyway, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Um, you know, Of course, uh, check out our products and our great DVDs. You buy those and we can afford to uh, help Sam out and get some surgery that he needs to kind of look normal again um, because uh, nobody likes to talk to robots from the future. It's just not natural. Uh, so anyway, uh, be sure to check out our blog as well. Here at Video Copilot, we're going to continue to make these awesome free tutorials and I hope you guys enjoy them. We will see you next time.